Junovic, One Boy's Adventure in Alaska. Written by Ed Rosek. Narrated by Lara K. Crawford. Animal and place names in Junovic's adventure are derived from the Atna language, one of 11 threatened Athabascan native languages. The dark outside was lifting as Junovic shivered awake. Even with the heavy fur blanket covering him, he was chilled and could tell the fire had gone out in the small potbelly stove used to heat the tiny cabin. His face was a little numb and frosty cold. He yawned a small, warm breath that quickly materialized into a wispy cloud then slowly faded away. Junovic had found himself bored lately and planned to go exploring today. With that in mind, he quickly got out from under the covers. He threw a couple small logs in the stove, lit them, then quickly dressed for his adventure. His parents were still sleeping, so Junovic wrote them a short note. Going exploring today, heading south, it said. His parents were used to him going out exploring and trusted him to do so on his own. He was young, but they had taught him well. He knew how to be resourceful, how to find shelter under any circumstances, and where and when to find food in this rugged wilderness. Junovic was a natural lover of all things wild and couldn't get enough of the great outdoors. He grabbed some smoked salmon slices, cookies and water, then headed for the door. Alaska has it all, he thought as he closed the front door and waded into the powdery snow. He loved the mountains, forests, rivers, glaciers, and lakes of Alaska. But his favorite thing of all in his northern home was the abundance of wild animals. Today was a perfect day to explore. To his left, the sun was almost up lighting the mountains near his small village with a soft blue glow. As he walked, the crisp winter air cooled his lungs with each breath. Frost tinted the furry ends of his hood rough. Maybe I'll see a moose or a fox today, he hoped. Junivik had a canyon in mind where he wanted to explore. He'd explored the area around and beyond this canyon, but was always curious what wonders he would find there. As he approached the canyon, a twinkling of sunlight finally hit the mountaintops and changed their color from soft blue to light orange. He enjoyed the beauty of colors, especially during winter when most everything else was white. A magnificent stand of trees beckoned him into the narrow canyon. As he approached the forest, he heard an hoo, 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 hoo. He looked up into the trees for the source of the sound. Oh, hi, Mr. Owl. I'm Junivik, he said to a hawk owl perched on a treetop. How are you today? Hoo, hoo. I am Bessini, and I'm happy and warm, young Junivik the owl answered. How are you, ooh, this fine cold day? I'm excited, Bessini, the boy replied. I'm adventuring today. I'm going to explore this canyon. Good for you, ooh, young one, the beautiful feathered bird hooted. Just be wise, for the valley widens beyond, and you, ooh, can easily get lost. Ooh, 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 ooh. I will, Bessini, Junivik said, then continued into the forest and the quiet hush of the snow-covered trees. Goodbye, and thank you for your concern. You are welcome, Junivik, the owl said as he twisted his head and winked with one eye at the young explorer. Junivik walked for quite some time through the deep forest. A light snow began to fall and filter down through the trees. The woods grew darker from the clouds that moved into the valley. He loved the snow and always wished it would never stop falling. 
As the snow piled up on the trees, the woods became ever quieter. As the brave young boy stepped out of the forest, the snow was still falling steadily, but had begun to lighten a bit, and the valley had widened enough that Junovic couldn't see the steep mountainsides to the left or right of him. Even so, he felt confident and continued on. He stopped for a moment when he saw something dark up ahead. Is that a moose? He thought. He continued on toward the dark figure. It was walking slowly through the deepening snowfall. Hello there, moose, Junivik said as he drew close enough for the lumbering animal to hear him. My name is Junivik. Who are you? I am Deyazi, the large moose said. Then she shook her head and long neck to shake off the accumulated snow. What are you doing way out here in the valley, young human? I'm exploring, Junivik replied. Am I still heading south, Deyazi? You are, she replied, looking concerned. But be very careful, Junivik. With this snowstorm, you could lose your bearings very easily. I will, Deyazi. Thank you so much for your concern. With that, Junivik continued on his way. He walked into the white storm with much confidence. He looked up occasionally to catch a falling snowflake with his tongue and blinked when one hit his eyelashes. He trudged and trudged through the deepening snow. Finally, he stopped and looked around him. Hmm, he thought. I'm not sure which way is south now. He looked around and around. I don't know which way is north either. I know I have to go north to get home. But now I'm not sure which way is which, he thought. Then, out of the snowstorm, a thick furred lynx walked up to him. You look lost, the big cat said. I, I, um, Junivik stammered. Yes, I think I am. I need to be heading north. The tufts of hair on her ears perked up and she purred. I'm Junivik from Atnatu, he said. Who are you? I am Niduyi. It's very nice to meet you, Junivik. You're from Copper River, the cat stated. I've visited that area. Too many people for me. I like it better out here in the wilderness. It's nice to meet you, too. Do you know where I am, Nidui? Junivik asked. I really need to head back home now, but I don't know which way is north. I mostly wander with the help of my hearing, smell, and sight, looking for food. So I don't know directions well, she replied. But that way, she said, looking off to her right, you'll find a small forest. Nuni, the porcupine, lives in a tree there. He is better at directions than I. Maybe he can help you find the way. Oh, thank you, Nidui. I am very grateful. Good day. <laughs> You're welcome, Junivik, Nidui purred, then turned and trotted off, staying high in the snow with her big furry paws. Junivik easily found the small forest, and there, about halfway up a white spruce tree, was a porcupine. He was munching happily on spruce needles. The spiny creature stopped and looked down at the young human below him. Are you new, Nee? Junivik called up to him. I am, the portly porcupine stated in a soft tone. I'm eating my lunch needles. How can I help you? 
I am Junivik from Atnatu, and I am lost, the boy stated. <laughs> the porcupine laughed. It's a big world out there, Junivik from Atnatu. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I only know my way around these trees. I do know where you may find help, though, the porcupine chittered. He turned his head to the left. That way, you'll find an otter scurrying around down by the frozen creek. He knows his way around very well. Thank you, Nuni. I am very grateful, Junivik responded, then turned away from the small forest and headed down toward the frozen creek. You're welcome, young human. You should hurry now, Junivik from Atnatu. The darkness will arrive soon. Junivik waved back at Nuni as he walked away and faded into the snowfall. He called out, thank you again. The snow began to let up a little as Junivik came upon the frozen creek. He looked left and right as he waded through the snow down to the creek. He didn't see or hear anything. He trudged out onto the blanketed ice. Hello, is anybody here? He thought he heard a muffled, hello. He looked around and couldn't tell where the sound came from. Suddenly, right in front of him, a head popped right out of the snow. It startled him. Hi, the creature said. I'm Tutke. Sorry I scared you. The long, thin creature jumped out of the snow and then dove back in, only to reappear several feet away. Junivik realized it was the otter and watched it frolic in the deep powder. It was funny. The otter loved playing in the snow. It dove straight in and seconds later burst out in front of Junivik. It had snow on its whiskers and a big smile with little white fangs poking out. Hi, Totke. I am Junivik. It's nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine, the otter said, rolling over, then popping up again. A small pile of snow on its head looked like a white hat. Junivik laughed. <laughs> Totke, I am lost. Nuni, the porcupine, told me that you may be able to help me find the way back north. Do you know the way north? The silly otter jumped up high in the air and dove head first into the snow, arched its back, and came right back up, popping his head out like before. Nope, he said. No, Junivik said sadly. The otter shook the snow off his face. Nope, I don't know the way north. The otter smiled gleefully. But follow my creek that way he chirped, pointing with his long tail. Make a left at the fork in the creek and head for the big hill. You will find a big snow-covered hump next to a large boulder. Under all that snow is a sleeping bear. His real name is Ursus Arctos, but we call him Chawnee. He is very wise, so maybe he can help you. He could be a grumpy one, that Johnny, so call him out gently. I will, Junivik said. Thank you so much, Take. I am very grateful. With that, the cheerful otter turned and dove back into the snow. Junivik could see the humps form as Take played underneath the snowy blanket. What a happy otter, Juni thought as he headed upstream on the frozen creek. It took a while for him to arrive at the fork in the creek. It was starting to get a little dark out now, so he was getting concerned. Gee, I hope mother and father aren't worried, he thought as he continued on. It was easy to find the big hump on the hillside next to the big boulder. Junivik approached carefully. He stood just close enough to the big hump of snow and with a soft voice asked, Is anybody home? Nothing happened. 
No noise, no movement. He raised his voice a little this time. Is this the home of Chani? Suddenly, the ground shook. Junovic took a step back. Little balls of snow rolled down the hill from the shaking. A hole began to open up on the side of the hump. It got bigger. Then, Junovic saw a huge paw with huge claws swipe at the snow. He stepped back some more. There was big movement inside the hole. A giant furry bear head popped out. Who wakes me? The bear bellowed. I was sleeping. But pardon me, the boy said, shaking. I am Junovic from Atnatu, and I'm looking for Chani. The big bear yawned, and Junovic saw its sharp, ivory-colored teeth. He was a little scared. I am Chani, the massive head said. What do you want? I, I'm sorry to wake you, Chani, but I am lost, and Totke the otter said you are wise and may be able to help me. I need desperately to head back north. Oh, that. The bear calmed down a little. Lost, huh? Well, little human friend. Yes, I can help you. I have a relative that will help point the way for you. You're looking for Ursa, but you will have to find Aurora first. She is his closest friend. Where Aurora is, Ursa won't be far behind. To find them, follow this hillside around to the three valleys. And keep your head up. Now hurry. Darkness is upon you. Thank you so much, Johnny. I am very grateful, Junivik said with a smile. Welcome, Johnny grunted. Then the big bear pulled his head back inside the snow cave. Junivik saw the huge paws and the huge claws filling the snow back in until the hole was invisible against the big hump. He thought he heard snoring inside as he turned to walk away. He followed the hillside toward the three valleys. As he was walking, Junovic noticed the snow had nearly stopped. He looked up and saw a few stars through the broken clouds. He hurried on. Back on the Copper River, the little log cabin was hunkered down in the cold, dark evening. Fresh snow covered its roof. A single light inside glowed a soft yellow and mixed with the orange firelight. Through the front window, the comforting light glinted on the cold snow outside. Inside, it was cozy warm. Do you think he'll be all right? Junivik's mother asked as she put another log into the potbelly stove. He's been gone for some time now. It's not like him to take this long on an adventure. He is tough like Bull, her husband said, making a hard fist. He'll be fine. We have taught him well the ways of our ancestors. Survival skills and safety. I trust he will be home soon. He hugged his wife. Stars began to shine over the little log cabin on the Copper River. Smoke trailed up and out of the chimney and then paused and held firm in the frigid evening air. Junivik walked and walked and walked. He wondered, who is Chani's relative Ursa? His father had told him of Nelly, the black bear. Could it be Nelly? His father had also taught him about polar bears, but he knew they were way north of here and he doubted that he'd run into a polar bear. So, who was this Ursa? Junovic was curious. He was getting tired and leaned against a small outcrop on the hillside. He ate some smoked salmon sticks, 
sipped water, and watched his breath turn to ice fog in the frozen air. Psst, he heard to his left. He looked, but didn't see anything. Over here! He looked more closely and saw a fox. It was so white, it blended with the snow. It was almost invisible in the dim light of the evening. Oh, hi, Junivik said. Who are you? C call me Nagetsi, the fox said. Are you cold? I'm not, the fox stuttered. No, Junivik answered. I'm very warm and comfortable, as I have been walking for so long. My name is Junivik. And I'm lost. Oh, uh, oh, oh, that is a problem, the fox said. A real p problem. Where are you heading, Junivik? Well, I'm looking for the three valleys. I'm trying to find my way back home to the north. Chani, the bear, said I could find his relative Ursa there and that Ursa could help point the way. Do you know where the three valleys are, Nagetsi? Uh, uh, yes, actually, I know the way. He looked toward a small ice canyon to his right. G g g go through that little c canyon, and y y y y y you will enter the three v valleys. Y you're welcome in advance. Oh, thank you, Nagetsi. I am very grateful, Junivik said. He headed down toward the ice canyon. It was very dark as he entered the tight crevice, and he could hardly see at all. He looked up at the opening high above him. He could see a few stars. Juni had to use his hands to feel his way. Slowly, Carefully, he worked his way through the long, narrow slot until he came to the end. There, it opened into the three valleys. In the nearly gone light, he could just make out the three valleys, disappearing between the mountains like fingers. One valley went to the right, one straight away, and one to the left. He didn't know where to go from here. He thought back to what Chani the bear had said. Keep your head up. Junivik thought, keep my head up. It's hard to keep my head up when I'm lost. He thought of his parents, whom he loved and respected. They taught him many things about survival and always told him, find a way. That thought gave him incentive to keep going, to find his way home. He started to walk and looking up, noticed the clouds were completely gone. The night sky was full of stars. Then he saw them, the bright green, shimmering lights of the Aurora Borealis. They were stunning, waves and waves of dancing curtains, bright green with tinges of red and purple at the bottom. He was mesmerized by the scene. Suddenly. It occurred to him, Aurora. Johnny said to find Aurora. He was talking about the Aurora Borealis. Junivik remembered that his mother called the Aurora Yadipe. Keep your head up, Johnny had said. That's what he meant. Keep your head up and you'll find Aurora. Junivik smiled. He looked back the way he had come, thinking about the gruff bear and whispered in that direction. Thank you, Chani. Looking up into the night sky again, Junivik called out. Aurora, I am Junivik from Atnatu. I need help finding someone. Chani, the bear, told me that you are friends with Ursa, and that Ursa could point the way north to my home. Do you know where he is, please? From far away came a soft, motherly voice. Junavik from Atnatu. I am Yadi Bey, the Aurora. I know Ursa very well. He is Ursa Major, 
the Great Bear Constellation. We call him Nekeltan. He carries the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is a star map, and it points toward the North Star. Follow the North Star, and it will take you north to your home. Junivik understood. He remembered now. His father had taught him about Nekeltan and the Big Dipper, and how it pointed to the North Star. The Big Dipper and North Star could even be found together on the Alaska State flag. Oh, thank you so much, Aurora. I am very grateful, Junivik called out to the marvel in the sky. You are welcome, Junivik. Now, stay right there, Aurora said. He watched Aurora. She was beautiful. This time, as she waved her brightly colored curtains of green and red, they parted, and behind her was the Big Dipper. Junivik immediately recognized it. He lined up the end stars and found the bright, shining North Star. It sat directly above the valley to the left. He started walking. He heard a soft whisper from high up in the sky. Good luck, young human. Thank you, Yeti Bay, he replied. Junivik followed the valley by keeping the North Star in front of him. He walked and walked. He came to where the valley veered left and opened onto a high ridge. At the edge of the ridge, he peered down and saw the great copper river. There, on the bank by the woods, was the small cabin with the warm light glowing in the window. He headed down the slope. As he got close to the cabin, he saw smoke swirling out of the chimney, as if reaching for the North Star. He had found the way. Junivik was home. This has been Junivik, One Boy's Adventure in Alaska, written by Ed Rosek, narrated by Lara K. Crawford. Copyright and production copyright. But what about likes? Don't we want to mention likes? Oh, yes, uh, of course, Nagetsi. What would you like to mention about likes? Well, if our listeners enjoyed Junivik's adventure, would they please give us a thumbs up and like us below? Yes, of course. That would be very nice. Anything else you'd like to mention, Nagetsi? Well, we would appreciate it very much if our listeners would s subscribe also. That way... We can create, and they can enjoy more fun stories in the reading and fun room. Thank you in advance. Okay. May I finish now, Nagetsi? Yes, of course. Copyright and Production Copyright 2017 by Ed Rosek